and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Laura. This is the Last Minute Laura channel. And when you come here, you can usually find me making something or doing something crafty. Today, I hope to be doing both. This video is going to be a little bit more of a vlog style, make along, handmade, sort of vibe. I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of food preservation, but I'm also going to be including some natural dye work. I'll probably do a bit more hammering, some flower pounding into fabric as well today, and I'm just going to bring you along with me as I sort of go through the next few days of doing handmade stuff. So if that sounds cool to you, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe. Let's jump into the video. First though, have to deal with this kitchen. This morning I put a whole bunch of parsley into the dehydrator. I also sliced a melon from my mom and dad's farm and put it into the dehydrator. So I have to clean up the kitchen first and then we're gonna get into, I think we'll put the parsley away first. Oh my goodness, that took way longer than I had planned. Oh, the dehydrator's on. Let me bring the dehydrator over and we can put the rest of the parsley into the jar. So I didn't grow enough parsley to preserve, but I went to my parents' farm and my mom had a huge container of parsley, so I took some home. And it's probably gonna be enough for at least quite some time. I don't know how long this will last, we'll see. All right. So I'm going to get a little container for these melon slices I dehydrated. I haven't figured out what I'm gonna do with them yet. They're very mild, so maybe I'll do them as part of some kind of trail mix. But they're very crispy. Like, look at this. They're like mildly sweet. I would say somewhere between a cantaloupe and a cucumber, but more towards a cucumber. I do think if I do melon again, I'll do these thicker slices. The thin ones where I used the mandolin on the thinnest setting, they're so thin that they just sort of stuck to the dehydrator and just flake away like nothing. The thicker slices stayed and have a bit more of a crunch to them. This little bit of parsley mixed with melon. I'm just gonna put that into a separate container and I'm gonna use that in dinner tonight. Ta-da! Parsley and melons. All right, so I'm gonna add these to my little herb cabinet area and I'm gonna figure out what we're gonna make for dinner. All right, so for dinner, ended up with pasta with turkey and tomato sauce and hot peppers parsley and some other veggies, sweet potatoes and carrots. I think that's it. Anyway, it's just a spicy pasta dish. Oh, and I used my homemade jalapeno chili oil. Probably we will have leftovers and I'll deal with the dishes after, but <clears throat> here it is. Not the prettiest, but it's tasty. Okay, so it's a couple days later now. <laughs> I didn't do any of the stuff that I wanted to yet for this week, but today we're gonna get it done. So I'm going to get started with just a task I wanna get out of the way just so that I feel like I completed something. I picked up oatmeal and I keep our oatmeal in jars on the shelf that are labeled oatmeal because that's what I like to do. So I'm gonna start this morning by putting the oatmeal into the jars and putting them away. That'll make me feel good. And then after that, I've got my eggplant. I've already put them in the sink with some water just to get any things or dirt off of them. Then we're gonna peel them and start doing the process for pickling them. And then while those, after we peel the eggplants, while we're waiting for them in the salt, we can de-husk and cut the ground cherries. And then this space will be tidied off, which will allow us to get started on the natural dye project. The dishes are done, so I'm feeling good. I've got my apron, so I'm ready to stay tidy. I've got shoes on, so it's like a real day. And let's do it. There we go. One job done. The serotonin. Okay, so the next job is peeling uh, all of these eggplants. Okay, and I've got a nice full bowl now. Take another big pinch of salt and I'm gonna just put that on top. And now I'm just gonna give it a quick tossy toss. I'm just gonna rub the salt on each one. Now I'm just going to put some saran wrap over these. 
And then I am going to put them in my oven just to stay out of my way. The oven is obviously off, so I'm not going to be heating them at all. This is just to keep them out of the way because they need a couple of hours just sitting at room temp. The salt's going to draw out a lot of the brown, so these are gonna turn really brown and the salt is gonna draw out a lot of moisture. So next time we see this, there's gonna be a big puddle of brown liquid at the bottom. So here's the before, and you'll have to wait for the after. And just for safety, I'm gonna write it on my whiteboard. Don't forget eggplant oven, and then today. Good, that way if I forget, it's written on the oven so I won't forget. All right, next, I've got these ground cherries that need to have the husks pulled off of them. So I'm gonna pull off the husks like that, and then the berries themselves, I'm gonna wash them. Just cause these fall in the dirt. They're like a sweet little tomatillo. They're weird, but they're good. I prefer them dried. Anyway, I'm gonna peel all of these and then rinse them and then we'll get on to the next step, which is chopping them up and getting them into the dehydrator. All right, step one for the ground cherries is finished. I've got them washed, I've got them peeled, Next step is gonna to be to cut them in half, but I've also got some garden huckleberries and I'm gonna just do the same job that I did for the, for the ground cherries. I'm just gonna take them all off of their little peduncle things and I'm gonna make sure that there's no stems with the berries because I'm already in this, in the zone as far as doing little finicky things. So I'm just gonna do that and pick these off of here. And there we go, huckleberries are de-stemmed and washed, ready to go. Ground cherries, same thing. But Alex needs the kitchen now for a little bit to make his lunch, so I'm gonna take a break, leave these guys here, and uh, when I come back, we will get to work on those ground cherries. Okay, so I've filled up the pot with water and I'm going to add a little bit of dish soap to that. Then I'm going to add my yarn. I have a skein of Briggs and Little Regal Wool and Washed White and a skein of Knit Picks Merino style wool. And I think this one's called Natural White, but I'm gonna put those in. And I'm just gonna turn the heat on low and let that sit in there with the soap and the yarn for about an hour. Actually, I'm gonna put a timer on. Okay, now I am going to take the ground cherries. I'm gonna cut them in half, but not all the way through. And then I'm gonna put them on the dehydrator trays. I have filled one dehydrator tray with the um, ground cherries. I'm gonna put that on the dehydrator now. And there's still a handful left. I'm going to just give those to Alex as a snack. But there are the uh, ground cherries going in the dehydrator. Snack level expert. Grapes, ground cherries, apples, peanut butter mixed with vanilla yogurt for dipping. Tasty and healthy. All right, the timer just went off for the yarn. So I am going to take the yarn out now and we're going to do the mordanting process. This was the scouring process. Okay, now I'm going to add some alum powder. I'm going to do two teaspoons. One and two. And then I'm also going to do one teaspoon of cream of tartar powder. The alum is the mordant and the cream of tartar uh, supposedly helps to soften the yarn after um, the pre-mordanting process, which roughs it up a little bit. So that's, that's what's happening now. I'm gonna fill up the pot with water and then we're going to rinse out the yarn and add it back to that pot. So if you're new to natural dye, the scouring process for the wool, that's what we did with the dish soap by heating it up and letting it soak in dish soap. That's essentially just washing the wool. It's getting off all the oils, the lanolin, any dirt or grime, and just preparing the wool to accept the next stage in the dye process. And that next stage in the dye process is the mordanting. This is the process to attach 
a binder onto the wool that will hold on to the natural dye really well. So the natural dye can bite right onto the wool, but over time as you wash it, as it gets exposed to the sun, it'll wash out or it'll fade. If you pre-mort it the fiber, it creates a stronger bond between the pigment and the wool um, so that the color will hold on longer, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna rinse out this yarn now and then we're gonna add it to the pot. All right, and I am just gonna put that on a low heat and I'm gonna do that for another hour. And I'm done with these. What are we gonna do next? While we wait for the yarn, I am going to get a plan in place for these hot peppers. I think I'm gonna do another hot sauce. Okay, so the brine is boiling. I just turned the heat off and we're just gonna let that cool down to room temperature before we're gonna pour it over these peppers and garlic. All right, so not quite a full jar, but that's okay. We'll just have the brine come up over these veggies. So I've got some red peppers, some green chilies, some jalapenos, a couple of habaneros in there, and a bunch of garlic. I just have to wait for this brine to come down a little bit. It's just really hot right now. It's just hot, salty water. As soon as it's a little bit cooler, I'll pour it over these uh, peppers and then we'll pop a lid on it loosely. Okay, so here's my brilliant plan. I have the bottom of like a plastic container. I'm going to take some saran wrap and I'm just gonna cut a hole slightly smaller than that opening that I cut out of the bottom of this thing. It'll work, I think it'll work, it's gonna be fine. Okay, and then I'll put that saran wrap into the yogurt container. Okay, good. And then I'll add a little bit of water to that yogurt cup edge. And then when we put the lid on top, yes, it'll dip into the water and keep a seal, but it won't have to be a tight, tight seal. Good, I think. Have you cooled down enough yet? I think it's cool enough. So I'm just going to pour it into the jar. Now I'm going to use this plastic bottom from that yogurt container that I used for this lid MacGyvering and I'm going to put it on top of the peppers inside the jar and I'm going to just push it down and it's just going to keep all the peppers underneath the water. So now I'm gonna just get a clean teaspoon and I'm gonna scoop off the, the pepper flakes that floated up so that it's just clear brine on top. Okay. All right, I've got this clean plastic lid. It's a resealable lid. I'm just gonna pop it on top. I'm not pushing it down uh, and I'm not sealing it. I'm just putting it on top. And the edges of that yellow lid are sitting in water. Does that make sense? It's like a very poorly MacGyvered fermentation lid. Uh, you could just put a lid on loosely, but I'm gonna do this way because it looks uh, interesting. And now I'm gonna put this underneath my um, cupboard and that'll sit in there for, I'll check on it every couple of days, but it'll sit in there probably two weeks. Now I'm just gonna clean up my mess and then we can rinse out the yarn and get ready to do the dye pot. All right, we are gonna turn the heat off on the yarn and rinse out. The mordant. Okay, so now that the big pot is free, we can get the dye bath started. I am going to pour all these beautiful marigolds that I picked at my mom and dad's house uh, straight into the pot, and we're gonna get that on the stove onto, uh, I think I'll just do a low heat again, and we'll do an hour and see what happens. So let's do that now. Okay, so that is gonna sit now for an hour. So I'll put the timer on. And in an hour, I'm gonna add the yarn to the dye bath. So I'm gonna just let the yarn sit in the sink for this hour, then I'll rinse it on hot water one more time before I put it back in to the dye pot. So I'll see you in an hour. And here is the eggplant. It's been a couple of hours since we've dealt with that. Look at that. Isn't that weird? And that, we're probably gonna get like three times as much as that. Now I'm gonna rinse these eggplants in some cold water. Okay, and now we're gonna do the salt thing again. So I'm gonna get the salt and I'm gonna put 
a little bit at the bottom. And then I'm gonna layer in the eggplant, salt, eggplant, salt, eggplant again. All right, and now I'm going to put the saran wrap back on these eggplants and I'm gonna put them back in the oven where they will sit for another few hours. Again, the oven is off. Just keeping them out of the way while I do other stuff. Okie dokie. So there's still 45 minutes, so see you in a little while. There we go, there's the one hour timer. And here is what that dye bath is looking like. It smells so good. Uh, now we're gonna put that yarn into the dye bath. So let's do the knit picks one first. I'm just gonna put that right on top and we'll just let those sit together. And I'm gonna keep that on a medium low heat. I don't want it to simmer or anything, but I'm gonna keep it on a medium low heat for another hour. Oh my God, look at how much it's already turning yellow. Look at that color. Can you see that? It's like a highlighter, look at this. In just a second in there. Oh, that's gonna be great. Cool, that's a really pretty color. I think we're gonna definitely have to do some tie dye on that. So I'm gonna do another one hour timer and then we'll turn the heat off on that one. went off. The yarn is ready to come out of the dye bath. I'm gonna just bring the pot over to the sink. Oh my gosh! Oh, it's so pretty. I'm gonna grab the other skein and just put that right in. And now I'm gonna put that on the heat for another hour. But let me show you the color. Are you kidding me? Isn't that so pretty? All right. It's just gonna sit in there for a little bit. Okay, so the timer just went off for the yarn. And let's see how, oh my goodness, it looks so pretty. Isn't that pretty? That is so pretty. So now I am going to take this dye pot over to the sink and take the yarn out and put it with the other yarn. Oh my gosh, it's like school bus yellow. And I am not done with this dye pot yet. So I have a little cotton top that I made I'm just gonna throw that in. I also wanna see what happens if we over dye without over mordanting before over dyeing again. You're supposed to mordant before you dye, even if you're dyeing a second round, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna throw this fabric in. This is what we did on the last video. And same thing with this shirt. I'm just gonna toss that in as well and give it a little while in that dye pot for another hour. And while those other items sit in the dye pot, I am going to leave the skeins of yarn in the sink and I'm just gonna make some rice now to go with the spaghetti squash that we're having for dinner. There's supper. This one's Alex's. It is a half of a spaghetti squash, some rice, and the spaghetti squash is stuffed with beans and spices and corn and I don't know, good stuff. Okay, so it's evening now. The shirt and fabric have been on the stove for a couple hours now, actually. <laughs> I'm gonna turn the heat off there. And I'm going to get some fabric cut up into strips so that I can tie off some uh, areas of these skeins. Cause I wanna dip dye it in an iron after bath, but I love the color, like it's so bright. So I wanna do some like tie offs to allow uh, the yellow to be visible. Okie dokie, I have tied fabric on both skeins in different spots. So those are ready to go into the color modifier bath. But first we have to take the stuff out of the pot that's in there right now. Okay, so I filled my pot about halfway with water. I have my iron mordant here, and I'm just gonna pour it in probably a cup. And now I'm going to return this to the stove. Okay, so here's my brilliant plan. I've got the yarn tied together with some yarn, and now I'm going to put it into that dye bath. And then I'm gonna loop it to this which can hook up there. And now these are in. Okay, and I'm gonna turn that on to medium just to get it heated up. And hopefully that'll just be in there a minute or two. I think this one's already starting to turn color. Yeah, look at that. That's turning green. At least we know for sure the yellows are safe. Aren't they so pretty? The lighting's crap now because it's nighttime, but anyway, it'll just be a minute. I'll show you what it looks like when it changes color. 
while the yarn does its thing, I'm gonna rinse out these other pieces that were in the die bath. All right, this one I am going to actually add to the Morden pot, this shirt, because I am just trying to break this shirt. That's what it's looking like right now. Okay, the yarn looks to have shifted quite a bit in color. So I'm gonna call it here for these guys and I'm gonna pull them out and we're gonna rinse them off and then we're gonna cut off the fabric and then we're gonna rinse them again. So let's do that. Awesome. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? So cool. Ta-da, we have two beautiful skeins. So these are gonna go hang to dry. Woohoo, two beautiful skeins. That'll probably lighten up a bit. Time to clean the kitchen again. Okay friends, it's the next day now and I am going to do the salting process with the eggplants again. Look how much, there's so much liquid under here. And then we're also going to get started processing these huckleberries. So I'm gonna put them into the pot and I'm going to add one cup of water. And that's just to prevent it from burning on the bottom. Now I'm going to turn the heat on to high. We're gonna get that to start simmering and then we are going to add some baking soda. I saw online that you're supposed to boil them in water and baking soda for 10 minutes to get some bitterness out. I'm not 100% sure. So as that's heating up, I'm gonna do the same process we did before with the eggplants. I'm gonna take them out into the other bowl, pour this bowl out, rinse them, and then put them back in. So let's do that now. It's getting a lot softer now. The seeds will come out when these are ready. Oh, all wet. All right, I'm gonna put this into the fridge and I'm gonna leave it overnight and tomorrow we will do one last rinse and then it'll be time to get these in jars. All right, so this has started boiling now. I'm gonna grab the baking soda and we are going to scoop some baking soda in. About a teaspoon, I think, is the what it said online. Cool. I'm gonna put a timer on for 10 minutes and we're gonna let this boil for 10 minutes and hopefully get out the bitterness? I'm I'm confused, but we'll go with it. It's turning green. Got boiled for 10 minutes. Now we're gonna pour this in the sink and rinse these berries. They smell like vegetables. Like boiled spinach or something. The color that's coming off of them is like toxic waste. Can you see this? Look, we're gonna rinse this off. Look at the color. Oh. It looks like poison. Round one. The next step is to add, oh wow, are those ever dark blue? It's to add um, lemon juice and sugar. So I'm gonna do that now. There we go. And that should hopefully turn our berries back to blue from that weird green. And now we need four cups of sugar, which seems like a lot, but I read a recipe. It really does seem Maybe I'll do two cups. That seems like a lot of sugar. Let's start with two cups. Maybe that recipe knows something I don't, but that seems like a lot. All right, so I put that back on the stove on medium with the two cups of sugar. That dark purple is back. I think we're supposed to cook this for another 10 minutes as well. Oh, it kind of smells like blueberries now. So this is supposed to cook for another 10, 15 minutes. I've got a little chunk of nutmeg and I've got some cinnamon. Apparently these are pretty similar to blueberries, but not quite blueberries. So I'm gonna treat them kind of like a blueberry preserve and um, cinnamon and nutmeg are added to blueberries a lot. Pretty color. All right, so the recipe I read said that when it is at this point, I should mash it. Um, because the berries are better when they've been broken. And since I've never worked with these before, I am gonna just assume that that person knows what she's talking about. All right, <clears throat> it's a little while later now. This has had a chance to cool down a bit. The texture has changed, it's thickened up. Pretty jammy, kind of like a thick fruity jam. It smells really good, it smells like blueberries. 
Tastes like a blueberry. It's a little different than a blueberry. Maybe there's like a little bit of honey. It's like a blueberry plus honey. That's good. If you don't have access to blueberries, this is a good replacement. I'm gonna let it cool down all the way to room temperature. And then I'm gonna put it in a freezer bag and put it in the freezer and then just take it out when I need it, I guess. It's my plan. Good morning. I just woke up and I just turned the Mordant pot on again. It still has Alex's shirt in it. I am going to add two more of my shirts that I wanna do some more flower hammering on because the frost, I just checked, it's supposed to come tonight like another a killing frost. So I'm going to pick, I think, the rest of the marigolds and the dark cosmos later today and hammer them into some of my shirts, but I have to remordant them first. So I'm gonna put them in the iron mordant pot. This one accidentally went into a load of laundry that had resolve powder in it by accident, so it washed out a whole bunch of my beautiful prints. So I'm gonna reprint it, and it'll be beautiful again. I'm not scouring them. I think that's okay. I'm just gonna throw them right in. All right, so I put that pot on high. I'm gonna let it come up to a boil, and then I will turn it down to medium low. I'm gonna go have my coffee and wake up, start the day, and then we will come back to deal with those eggplants a little later in the morning. Okay, so it's later in the morning now. I have the other shirts in the pot still with the heat on, and I've taken out the button-up shirt for Alex. I have to unload the clean dishes and put them away. I need to wash the dirty dishes, but I already took the shirt out. So I'm gonna rinse the shirt first, and then we're gonna do all the dishes and get the kitchen tidied up. And then I think I wanna start on the flower hammering of the shirt. So let's rinse first. All right. The shirt is now rinsed out completely, clear water. I'm gonna put it outside to dry a little bit. I'm not gonna let it dry all the way though, because I think it'll be good to have the fibers a little bit damp when we're hammering the, uh, the flowers in, but I'm gonna hang this outside to dry for a little while. All right, so I got distracted. Now uh, that all of the plants are watered, now I'm gonna do the dishes. So I'm not in the mood to do the dishes yet. So I'm gonna rinse out the shirts that are in the dye pot or in the mordant pot. And then I'm gonna put a little bit more fabric into the pot. I've got some more cotton. I wanna use up as much of the iron that's in there as I can. So I'm gonna just keep putting stuff in it until I feel like it's not doing the thing. Oh, these definitely changed color. These are like orange now. Okay, so the shirts are rinsed and looking good, but I still don't wanna do the dishes. So let's go outside and do some flower pounding instead. So I want to take you outside, but it's really windy out there right now. So I'm gonna set the camera up and just let you watch because this part, I'm not gonna be able to like tell you what I'm doing. But I'm doing the same thing I did last week, hammering flowers down onto pre-treated fabric in the hopes of getting some really pretty designs. So it is a little bit later now, and I have printed a couple of things on the shirts. Look at this one. Ta-da! Isn't it cute? I'm still feeling like I wanna be doing some artsy, messy stuff. Oh, and I cleaned the kitchen, so I, I did do the thing. And here's the second one. I just did one Cosmo on there. And then on the shirt that's for Alex, Cosmo's on the front on both sides, and then one on the back, and then I did some marigolds around the Cosmos. And like I said, I'm not ready to be done doing messy artsy stuff, so I'm going to park myself and I think I'm going to do some printing on these shirts. I have some stamps and I have paint brushes and I think I wanna like add to these things with fabric paint because that'll be fun. Also, I turned the heat off on the mordanting pot. I think the fabric that I put in there is good and done, but I don't have anything to do with it right now, so. Oh, also about the eggplant. I can't do it today because I realized I don't have any jars left. So I need to pick up jars before I can actually pickle the eggplant. So I'm just gonna leave it in the fridge with the salt. And I think that's it. So let's go paint some stuff on the shirts. <laughs> It's thunder. 